So in this uh, third part of lesson two, we will review some common families of running times, such as polynomial, exponential, logarithmic, and we will also uh, go back to the algorithms we examined in lesson one and associate an asymptotic um, growth function with each one of them. So let's start with uh, polynomial running times that um, can be written as uh, t of n, a polynomial of uh, degree d. The important um, thing here is that this uh, coefficient of the highest power is positive. The rest of the coefficients may be zero or negative. So uh, I want us to see that um, this polynomial of degree d is big theta of the highest power of n. First, notice that for any of uh, the lower exponent terms, say a i n to the i, where, where i is uh, less than d, this is smaller or equal than a i absolute value, in case you know a i is negative, um, n to the i power, which is of course lower or equal than a i n to the d power for uh, any n. So what this shows is that the term uh, a i and i is big O of n to the power d. Now that we have shown this, we can go back to the properties we learned uh, in the previous part about uh, additivity as well as the bottleneck property that we discussed earlier and uh, see immediately that um, this whole sum is big theta of this um, first term because everything else is big O of this term. Let's look at an example. Suppose that I have uh, three functions. The first is n to some power, let's say 4.5. The second function of n is the square root of n. The third function is, let's say, 10 times n plus 1. How would you order these functions in terms of the big O notation? So, um, as we discussed, what really matters in all of these functions is the highest exponent. So, this one can be written as big O n to the power 4.5. It would be the same, by the way, if we had a proportionality constant here, say 4. It wouldn't matter. Um, the second function can be written as big O n to the power um, half, right? Um, and the third one can be written as big O of n. So uh, ordering these functions is equivalent with ordering their exponents, right? You would say that the function um, f2 is the slowest, then we have the linear function and finally we have this function as the um, function that grows the fastest. Now let's remember some of the algorithms we saw in lesson one. Back then we looked at the running time of the algorithms without giving an asymptotic um, growth function bound. So remember that for the algorithm that finds the maximum uh, number in an array of size n, we had linear running time. So we can say that this algorithm is big O of n. The same is true for uh, merging two sorted lists of uh, size n. We looked at an algorithm that can find the closest pair of n points that was quadratic. Later in the course, we will actually see a faster algorithm for solving that problem that can um, run in big O n log n. Finding the disjoint subsets uh, of n uh, given a set of n items, we looked at an algorithm that was big O n cube. And finding an independent set of size k in a graph of n nodes, um, we looked at an algorithm that is big O n to, to the power k, where k is a constant. Another common class of um, running times involve logarithms. So let's remember some basic properties of the logarithmic function. The first is that I can change the logarithm uh, base from a, where a is larger than 1, 
to any other base I want b also larger than 1 simply by using the formula, right? So what this means is that if the running time is expressed in terms of base a, I can just change it into a base b scaled by a proportionality constant. If the running time is log base a of n, this is uh, simply theta of log n for any uh, base. So very often uh, we don't even write what the base is. The second property that I want you to remember from calculus is that logarithmic functions increase slower than linear functions. For instance, if we take the natural logarithm of n, that is uh, smaller than n for any n that is greater than or equal than 1. So in general, we can write that a logarithmic function of n, again, independent of base, is asymptotically upper bounded by um, a linear function of n. And similarly, if we, of course, multiply both sides of this by n, um, we get that the n log n, which is the log linear uh, running time that we saw in merge sort, is a uh, big O of n squared. Finally, we can uh, say more generally that the logarithmic function is asymptotically upper bounded by any power of n, even if this exponent x is lower than 1, as long as it is, of course, uh, positive. What this means is that a logarithmic running time grows more slowly than any polynomial um, function. Again, I want to remind you from lesson one, we saw binary search on an array of size n. That algorithm has a running time of, uh, um, that is uh, proportional to log n, so we can write that this is big O log n. And for merge sort, we saw that um, the running time is big O n log n. The last class of uh, functions uh, that we will discuss is the exponentially uh, increasing running times. The exponential um, running times increase faster than the polynomial running times. So for any r that is greater than 1, this exponential function increases faster than any polynomial function of n as long as the exponent is positive. Imagine that we take the logarithm of both of these functions, right? This is d times the logarithm of n. Well, if I take the logarithm of um, r to the nth power, this is the logarithm of r times n. So this function increases more slowly than this function because the logarithm increases more slowly than the linear function. And so the function that is polynomial here it increases more slowly than this exponential function. The second point is that not every exponential function is the same. If you imagine that we have two different bases, uh, r and s, where s is uh, smaller than r, then this exponential function increases, of course, more slowly than this. The ratio r over s, which is greater than 1. Um, that means that um, this ratio diverges. Finally, sometimes people talk about super exponential running times. Think about the function n to the nth power. Here, it is an exponential function, but the base also increases, right? So clearly, um, any exponential is equal of this super exponential uh, function. Finally, I want to remind you a couple of algorithms from lesson one. Um, we saw the maximum independent set problem in a graph of size n. The running time for that algorithm, as you remember, was big O 2 to the power of n. So this was an exponential time algorithm. 
and we also looked at the travel salesman problem where if we approach it in a in a brute force uh, way examining all possible tours we're getting uh, big O n factorial and I want to say two things about n factorial the first is that n factorial is lower than um, n times n n times which is n to the power of n so the uh, n factorial function is big O of n to the power of n slower than the super exponential running time I mentioned earlier the second point I want to make about the n factorial function is that you can approximate it using something called um, Stirlings Stirlings um, approximation or Stirlings formula and it is that n factorial is approximately equal the square root of 2 pi n and then we have this ratio to the nth power. The n factorial grows super exponentially as well but with a smaller base than n.